Hi everybody! This project is the beginning of fulfilling a lifelong desire to hand build my own 8-bit computer. This began in my early teens when I saw the Altair 8800 in Popular Mechanics. Later, in my junior year of high school, I got my hands on all the chips for an Intel 8080, but I couldn't come up with the other parts I needed to build it. My first job after graduating high school was writing 8080 and later C80 assembler for a computerized process control system. The hardware was based on the STD bus. The cards are 6.5 inches by 4.5 inches. A typical system included the following cards. A processor board with 4K dynamic RAM and 8K ROM, a CRT controller board, a battery-backed static RAM board with real-time clock, and parallel and serial I.O. boards. This is probably where my preference for a bus-based design comes from, and this is precisely why I was hooked when I saw the RC2014 video on YouTube. The creator of the RC2014 project sells all the parts in kit form, which includes custom printed circuit boards. I began with the CPU board. It is a simple breakout board for the Z80 CPU. It also takes care of some necessary logic levels with pull-ups. I get a real sense of satisfaction from applying highlighter as I wire the board. I didn't have any of the parts on hand for a standard clock generator, so this clock board is an A-stable 555 timer running very slowly. I used a Vero board for the back plane. It features a 5-volt power connection, power LED, and reset switch. This is my first time working with this type of prototype board. I enjoyed the technique of building circuits using a drill to make strategic cuts to specific traces. I neglected to film the first test, but it went like this. I grounded the data lines to simulate a no-op instruction and observed the Z80M1 signal toggling after applying the reset switch. The computer does not currently have a power on reset. Not the most thorough test, but I was encouraged to continue on. This board design calls for a 27C512 64K EEPROM. The three jumpers on the board are intended to map one of eight 8K banks at eight address zero. I confirmed that setting all three jumpers to one would allow me to use the 27C64 8K EEPROMs that I have on hand. I recently purchased a vintage EEPROM programmer, allowing me to create a test EEPROM. The test program is just several jump instructions, C3 in hexadecimal, or 303 in octal, or 11000011 in binary. <laughs> the program eventually jumps back to address zero, creating an infinite loop. So here's the demo. I'm turning on the, the power supply. Notice the LEDs in front. This is just for testing purposes and isn't part of the final project. Hit the reset button and you can see it starts running the program. And as it fetches each byte of the instruction out of the EEPROM, we can see the LEDs lighting up. Move the programmer out of the way. And uh, you can see the clock board behind the CPU board. And in just a minute here, we'll see the front of the ROM board. You can see the jumpers in the upper left corner there. Except for the vintage chips I've been hanging on to all these years, I found all the parts used in this project on eBay and Amazon. Mostly eBay from China, though. Yeah, I'm cheap like that. Yet to build are a full-speed clock board, a 32K RAM board, and a serial I.O. board. Once I have those done, I'll work on programming an EEPROM with BASIC. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and ring the bell to see more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.